everybody out there in YouTube land. Hope all is well with everybody. Hope everyone is um, having a good day, despite our circumstances in this state of America, uh, in this the state that America is in. I am very, very angry as usual uh, regarding situations that occur in our country, um, and the response to what um, the tragedy is um you know i'm listening to uh my radio station uh a radio station that i i like some of the music uh but i don't do not like the the, the conversation at all I, I you know i really despise the conversation because the conversation is so anti-christ it's unbelievable and when i say anti-christ because a lot of people are like oh what's that you know a lot of people they don't understand what is anti-christ but anti-christ is anything that is against christ it's anti-christ it's not for christ and although they are supposedly a christian let me put my quotes up there a christian radio station that is supposed to encourage uh individuals um or whatever, and and give glory to God. Actually, um, the conversation is foolishness. Every day, it's about just is joke. They're joking, uh, making up uh, trivia. Uh, you know, asking people to call in and tell them about uh, the first time you. It just it's really big nonsense. Instead, you what we are. As Christian New Testament believers, we are to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, point and blank. That's it. That is it and that is all. But people are too busy doing all sorts of things. Yesterday they had all of this Valentine stuff on saying uh, to call it in and tell us if, when, when you first met your whatever. Just so many different uh, things that surrounded Valentine's Day. That should not have been a topic. I'm sorry. If you are into Valentine, that's your business. But I'm talking about New Testament believers, those who believe in Christ. We have been deceived. We have been lulled into foolishness, honestly, because we do everything but what Jesus has called us to. Then we say, uh, you know, you're doing it, you know, you you doing it for Christ. You, but he said, you know, there are going to be people that come to him. Oh, we didn't we cast out devils in your name? Didn't we do this in your name? Didn't we do that in your name? And what is he, his response? Jesus' response is going to be, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I knew you not. Don't say you did something in his name that he didn't ask you to do. He didn't ask you to do that. What he, what he, what he said was, now these are... Go and look in your word. Stop listening to people. Go and look for yourself. Ask him. Go and pray, God, what is your will for me, for my life? What am I supposed to be doing as a New Testament believer? Did, what, this is what people are saying out here about the church, uh, that we shouldn't be attending church and that we should not be tithing. Is this all true? Go and ask. Why are you afraid to ask him? Why are you still giving all of your time, your talents, your resources, and your money to a church building and or leader? When there are people out here, they are mentally deranged because no one has ever preached them or ministered the gospel to them. And the gospel that they, in quotes, had ministered to them was not the gospel of the real Jesus Christ. It was the gospel of church membership. And church, if anybody that's going to church... There's going to be some nonsense going on and so nobody's going to get help. Every time you go to church, trust me, you're not getting help. If you if you if you getting help, if, if you no, that's not what I meant to say. People when people are going in the church and, and they're going in with a problem, they're leaving out with that same problem. Because the Holy Spirit is not in that. God is not in that. So that person, that's why people go back every week. And that's why you see the same people in those prayer lines week after week after week after week. You see the same people asking for money, needing money for their rent, needing money for their bills and things of that nature week after week after week after week. There has been no change, even in your own life. What has really changed in your life? Since you started your church attendance, how many people have you ministered to? The Bible says he that winneth souls is wise. How many people have you witnessed to? 
So the commandments of New Testament believers, let me get back, is to love your the Lord your God with all your soul, your strength, and your might, and your heart, your soul, everything, with everything, and then your neighbor as yourself. You understand that? Then he also told us to go out and compel men to come unto him. He, all of the Ten Commandments hang on one premise, one foundation, and that's love. I mean, remember, the, the reason Jesus came to this world, wrapped himself in flesh and came to this wicked world is because he loved us. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that we can be reconciled to Christ. But we have reconciled ourselves to church membership, church activities, church traditions, church doctrines, church leadership. Church, 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 church. And people are out here hurting. Some people, they are out here homeless. People are uh, 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 without food, without electricity. And it depending on the climate you live in, uh, if it's very cold, imagine that. Imagine yourself without electricity. Imagine yourself without any heating source in your home. Imagine yourself without proper uh, and clean and and warm uh, or proper clothing. Imagine your children not being able to attend a good school. You know, a decent school. I'm not talking about Ivy League stuff, but I'm just saying to get an education. You know, imagine yourself being raped or uh, uh, incest uh, 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 taking place in your home. Imagine these things that people are going through on a daily basis. Basis and they have no clue. They have no hope. Remember, Jesus is our hope and our future. He gives us hope and a future. But if you don't have that, there's no way you can survive it. Your mind will surely snap. That's why people are out here doing what they're doing. Because we don't go out. And the people that we see when we go out, we walk past them. We snob them. Even today, I heard uh, these people, these same people that I was referring to on the radio station, they were saying, well, people know the difference of right and wrong. Yes, people know the difference of right and wrong. But everybody's difference of or, or, or uh, understanding of right and wrong is different. Because if you don't have the Holy Spirit, there's going to be different opinions. Everybody has a different opinion, even of different scriptures and how they're interpreted. Because if the Holy Spirit... Spirit is not in it, and it's just human mind, it's going to be wrong. So, yes, people have a, everybody might have a sense of right and wrong, but what is your sense of right and wrong? Because a lot of people think this video is wrong because they believe so much in religious activities. Yes, but there are going to be some, they're going to be like, yep, that's right. Hmm. Because it's all about God. It's not about us. It's not about us being blessed or anything. It's about us being obedient to God. Oh, I was so put to shame yesterday. I ain't going to lie. I'm going to confess. I was not really put to shame, but I was, in a way, yeah, I was put to shame. Let me just say this. I was talking to one of my children, and we were talking about... uh, uh, aging or ageism or something like that. And he was uh, talking about, uh, we were talking about how he was going, uh, you know, how he'll take care of his parents um, and whatnot. And then he, I said, I forgot what he said. He said, because it's the right thing to do. And I said, well, it's also, don't you want to be blessed? He was like, I mean, come on. He was telling me, <laughs> oh, I was so oh, I was so messed up. He was saying, it's the right thing to do. It's Oh, it's obedience. It's not about me. He's like, it's not about me being blessed. It's about doing the right thing. Taking care of my parents is the right thing to do, whether I get blessed or not. Oh, my God. Just imagine the egg on my face. I thank God for that revelation because it wasn't about being blessed because I went back to the scripture thinking in my mind about the scripture. Uh, you know, about, uh, you know, uh, those who take care of their parents or whatever. But my baby said, it's not about being blessed. It's about being obedient and doing the right thing. Whoa. Praise God. I just thanked God and I repented. 
of that because that was a religious thought. I had to cast that down. I had to cast it down because it was really a religious thought, you know, because we are to be obedient unto God. It's not about the fish and the loaves and what we're going to get from him. It's about doing the right thing. And we have to sacrifice. Sometimes we have to sacrifice our time and our fine, our finances and everything because, and it's really not even ours because the Bible says that all the gold and all the silver, all the cattle on a thousand hills belong to God. And then those who are tallest of tithing and they're giving to God, you're not giving anything to God. That goes to man. Did you go and give it to God personally? Where do you see the material or the result or the um, uh, the manifestation of the uh, uh, of whatever you gave? You see it on the church uh, pastor's back, his wife, his family's back, what they're rolling in, what they're living in. And all of their lavish and flamboyant living. And yes, you might not have a pastor that's living flamboyantly in quotes. But irregardless, that money is not going to God. Pay attention. He doesn't need your money. You're in a church. You're supporting this church building when people need homes. People need bills paid. People are losing their homes, uh, rent, whether it's uh, whether they're renters or whether they're owners. People are losing so much on a daily basis, and money is being going uh, directed, misdirected into churches every week, into so-called ministries every week. It's terrible. It's a shame. It's a crying shame. I pray that we will wake up. And know and get and get out here and help these people. Don't walk by people. Go and talk to people. Be led of the spirit, of course, because you got to be careful. But be led of the spirit of God. You know, and most of us, we don't even have the spirit of God. We think jumping up and down and running around a, a, a church building is the Holy Ghost. We caught, we catching the Holy Ghost. That's ridiculous. And this day and age, that's really nonsense. That's foolishness. And, and that's a foolish belief to belief to think that that's the Holy Ghost and crying and tremoring and all of that. That's not the Holy Ghost, my beloved. And if it's and if it's not the uh, the Holy Ghost, you must know that it's uh, the other side. So you might not even be saved. So you need to go and and examine yourself to see if you even in the faith or not, which is not bad. It's because it, on this side, it's not too late. On this side, it is not too late. Praise God. But once you're dead, it's too late. Go and examine yourself. Don't be haughty. Don't be offended into, in the manner by this message that you just turn it off and, and start running your mouth and saying evil things about it or about me. No, because, you know, it's not too late. I was deceived. We've been all deceived by something one way or another, whether we've been in a relationship and, and we were deceived and, and whether we have been in church membership and church activities and church leadership and all of that. And we were deceived. I was deceived. I was also a church a member. OK, a church leader. All of that. But that's not the right thing to do. Although I was always pulling away and, and doing my uh, ministerial things outside of the church, that still was, it still was uh, like uh, straddling the fence, more or less, because I was torn. I was torn between my outside work and, and my inside work. And that's the reason why I left my inside work. That is why I resigned from all church stuff. I don't want to have anything ever to do with church again in my life. There's nothing I could do in a church. I don't want to hear nothing they have to say. I don't want to be involved with it at all because it's utter nonsense. It has nothing to do with God or his mission or his mission and, and or commission that he has given unto me as a believer and or follower and or disciple of Jesus Christ. Point and blank. So every time there's a tragedy, think about how you walk past people. Think about how you turned your head when people needed your help. 
Just think about how much money and time and your talents and your resources you've given to a doggone church building, a building that's probably only occupied once or twice a week. And don't tell me you're praying for somebody. Don't nobody need your prayers. They need your action. They need your love. They need you out there. Love is an action word. What do you remember? Remember what he said. Love the Lord your God with all your, your strength, your might, everything, and your neighbor as yourself. That's an action word. You got to get out there in these streets. You got to get out there, whether you're on a platform, uh, uh, on YouTube, Periscope, whatever, and speaking to people, speaking love and comfort into the hearts of people. And when, and when you meet people physically, you got to help these people. You can't just walk past people. What good is that to say, oh, go and be, be warm if somebody tell you they don't have a good a, a place to stay in, in the night or whatever? And what good is for you to tell them, oh, well, God bless you, go and be warm? And you have a place. Come on now. Where's your heart? Where's your Jesus love? You don't have it. A lot of you don't even have it. You think you have it because you're going to church. That's not God. That's not God. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. It's foolishness. It's not of God at all. And I repented of all of that that I did in my life. And i have on a new trail, a new track with God. And he's so pleased. Not that I'm perfect. I'm going to make, we make mistakes or we, we live and we learn, you know, we experience. We go out here and, and do our thing and, um, you know, but we learn from those experiences. We mess up. You know, sometimes we we're overzealous because, you know, we tr- we want to help people, you know, because me, for, for, since I was young, younger, I hate for people to be in distress. I always hated it. I cry. I am a big I, I, I hate it. I, I, that's why I know my my purpose. You know, I know my, one of you know one of my missions. I know, but I, I hate it. I hate for people to be in distress. I hate for people to be without anything. I just want them to have what they need. I really, really do. I remember when we first started homemaking, and there was times when we didn't have certain things, and that would really touch my heart. And that's how I learned how to uh, save and how not to spend more than I had had and and be content with what I what I had so I always uh, after a a couple of times not really having enough for me uh, for our family or whatever I learned not to live beyond my means I learned what to cook what to purchase and things that nature is where to purchase when when to purchase things and whatnot how to cook things that are nutrition you know I learned all of these things and like the Bible said we learned through the through our suffering we learned obedience through our suffering and I learned a lot you know and I really thank God and give God all the glory for that and that is why I changed my uh, mission. Uh, even for this channel, although still random, because the Holy Spirit could be could come uh, in, upon a person, although He lives in us, uh, will come upon us with for with any kind of message or whatever to do. But my uh, goal objective here on this channel and on my other channel is to encourage us to live a a a, 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 a victorious life in Christ Jesus. Because a lot of us we think that living victoriously is going to church, having nice shoes, having nice clothes, a nice car, a nice home. No, it's doing the will of God. A victorious life is doing the will and the work of God. That's just the bottom line of it. That's it. And also to show us domestic ways to to purchase, um, you know, maybe uh, less expensive foods, uh, uh, you know, or, you know, and good foods and cooking good foods, uh, shopping different places and, you know, bargains and things like that, because you don't want to spend all your money. I mean, why would you spend every dime you have? And what is it for? How many clothes do we have? How many op- material things do we have that we are not even using? I mean, even myself, oh my goodness, the things I have to get rid of every year, not even just every year, but I mean, when I say every year, I mean, almost quarterly 
because uh, it's still excessive. Even though I think I'm paring down, I'm getting rid of things. The things I have are still excessive. You know, even you know, it's, it's crazy. But just beloved, I just want to encourage you to live a victorious life in Christ Jesus, and what that means entails a lot about our health. And about us being successful or victorious in Christ Jesus, meaning that we evangelize, we win souls to Christ. We are not out here flamboyant and um, extravagant and things of that nature. That is very anti-Christ. Jesus had nothing. He said they were like, come, in, come here. Or the, some of them disciples or, or, or uh, pre-disciples wanted to find out where Jesus lived. He said, come on, I'm going to show you. And what did he say in one scripture? He said, foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the son of man have nowhere to lay his head. Jesus had nothing. He made himself of no reputation. He made himself poor. He stripped off all deity, all riches in order to come down to this place. He became poor for our sake. So I'm not saying be, I'm not saying live in total poverty, abject poverty. But what I'm saying is, why, why should you be so excessive in your life, in your living, and call yourself a Christian when people need the things that you have, though? Why call, what are you doing? That's not a representation of Christ. If that's what you think, you're deceived. You got to go and rethink this thing. And thank God you got time to even rethink it while you're still alive. Because when you die, it's too late. You'll be in hellfire right with others. The ones you walk past and who have died. Beloved, get it, let's get it together. I am just, I just really had to come on here. I actually made a video yesterday morning or audio that I meant to put into video form, but I just got so angry again. I mean, I just, I'm just so tired of us, uh, you know, having all of these tragedies and not that these things will not happen, but they will lessen. Uh, and not that everybody is going to give their life to Christ when you meet them, you know, and two, Again, everybody is not, you might be a waterer, you might be a planter of that, a sower of that seed, and then somebody else will water, you know, uh, that seed and whatnot. So you might, that person may not get their life right away. Uh, and, but a lot of people will get their life right away but when you preach it the right way. Don't tell them about church and church membership because that is not hope for anybody. Tell them about Christ Jesus and what Jesus can do for them. Once they give their life, how they can live for him, they will give them hope, give them a future, give them something to do. This is this is all life is about, about Christ Jesus. Anything else is really futile nonsense. It's wastefulness. It ain't going nowhere. It's not meaningful to anybody. It's nothing. Beloved, I love you. I love you so much. I thank you for your time. I pray that you will... Um, Heed this message and it hurts. I know it may hurt because so many people, some of us are even uh, you, you, you a pastor yourself or you married to some pastor or some church leader or some deacon or, or you a deaconess or or whatever. It's going to hurt. But you got to pull away from it because it's not right. I'm blowing a trumpet in Zion. I'm warning. I am the voice in the wilderness. Please hear me. Let's get out here and get out here and do the work and the will of God. Too many people are dying and going, going to hell on a daily basis unnecessarily. Unnecessarily. And you too, yourself, could be in danger of hellfire because you are serving church and not Christ. Church membership and uh, uh, Christ those are two polar opposites of one another. Anybody who is attending a church or uh, involved in church ministry, uh, 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 church attendance is contradictory to Jesus Christ because you can't serve two masters. You're going to love one and you're going to hate the other. That's really just the bottom line of it. You can't do both. Because your pastor going to be telling you one thing. Jesus got a whole nother plan. It's telling you whole. He already told you a whole different thing. You know. So it's. it's, it's they're going to be. Those are two things that are polar opposite. And or contradictory. Uh, and in total contradiction to one another. So anyway. This video has gotten long enough. And I don't want to break out. 
break it up into two. I didn't think I would be on here this long, but the Holy Spirit is the leader and the guy. And I pray again that he will heed this message. He to have a ear. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Share this video. Like this video. Um, uh, you know, and whatnot, because more is coming. I, I just, I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm angry, you know, and I'm just, I'm really fed up and I'm always fed up. And I just, I, sometimes I don't make a video when I, of what I want to say, but I have to, I just write it down or something like that. But I have to tell you, I have to tell us all the truth of, of what we should be doing, you know, and who we are because people are deceived. I mean, I was there for years it was my career, you know, and I gave up it all. I gave it all up. And beloved, I had everything. I had everything. I made good money. I did. I, there's nothing that I that I wanted for. And, so, and I still don't want for nothing. <laughs> I still don't want for anything. You know, God got me. But um, it's in a different format now, you know. But I thank God for everything. So anyway, beloved, be blessed. And heed this message in Jesus' name. God bless you. Bye-bye.